what else? A bunch of people keep asking me about uh, all the drama at CNN and um, and about Chris Licht and all that. I never met Chris Licht. I was brought in before Chris Licht took over CNN, so I'm kind of like um, essentially rabbi-less at, at, at CNN. Although, I mean, I'll tell you this. Nobody is sort of like my guiding light or anything like that at CNN. Um, but I have more people that I can talk to about issues at CNN or issues I have with CNN, um, than I ever had at Fox. Um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just a different beast. I mean, there was a whole sort of divide and conquer, keep everybody compartmentalized thing at Fox that was, um, you know, that left me kind of in a loop. I mean, I was, I used to go and pick Chris Darwalt's brain all the time about things, but, um, you know, he was compartmentalized too. Um, anyway, I have a, I mean, I have a few points to make. First of all, I am not deeply invested in the office politics at CNN. Everyone has treated me very well. Um, I'm allowed to come on and, and do my thing. Um, the the kind of scheduling that they do is different than what I'm used to. I don't like doing nighttime TV very much anymore and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, but that's fine. They pay me a fair, you know, fair wage to do what I do. I'm happy to be there. Um, but my attitude has basically been, I'll show up, I'll do what I'm, I'll do what I'm asked if I can schedule permitting, yada, 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 but then I leave and I'm not getting hugely invested. I haven't, gotten hugely invested in the place's fortunes one way or another. Um, and for a bunch of just sort of practical reasons, one, I don't know if I'll be renewed, uh, two, um, um, you know, regimes change at these networks and it's sort of crazy to get too involved with anybody. And three, like, you know, there's just, there's a difference between being at a network that is not explicitly right of center. Um, I don't think CNN is explicitly, and when I say explicitly, I mean, as a matter of marketing left of center. Yeah, there are liberals there for sure. Um, and you know, I think that the, to the extent they have opinion hosts, they lean leftward. Um, but, uh, you know, anyway, we can talk about CNN more if you like, but like the only thing I was going to get to is, is I kind of have, you know, a soft spot for licked again, never met him. But I think he was trying to do the right thing at the network. And the problem with trying to do the right thing at a network, a cable news network, is your biggest uh, fans are the ones who are going to be the most angry. It's sort of like when you do a redesign on a website, which I have a lot of experience with. Uh, all you ever hear are complaints from the most committed users um, because they're the ones who have the most muscle memory and the most rigid and well-formed expectations about what they're supposed to get from the website. And uh, uh, the casual users may like it, but they don't like it enough to sort of say anything. And I think the same thing happens with cable networks is that you, if you get a whole bunch of people who are addicted or, or comfortable, right, or they've, they've formed habits with what they expect from it, and they love Brian Stelter, and they love Don Lemon and all that, then, of course, they're the ones who are going to be the most upset when you change things. But I guess, you know, I, I think for the most part, the changes that Licht was making, were, you know, were, were in the positive direction. Um, now, maybe some of that stuff will continue um, after he's gone. Um, I don't know. Maybe it won't. That's one of the reasons why I'm not going to get too addicted or too invested in the office politics of the place. But one, just one last point, one I've been meaning to make, um, for a while on here, you know, when you watch Fox or listen to sort of right wing table pounders, you will very often hear this sort of, oh, and the, you know, Fox is the only place where you're going to hear about this because the mainstream media won't cover it. And that is often true. I, I want to be very clear that Fox in its in the good old days, um, I think, and I've, I've been consistent on this. Fox was a real value add to American journalism in the sense that they didn't just take the lead of the, whatever the New York times said 
was the story of the day. And they covered things that other um, news outlets didn't. It became a problem because of the Fox News effect, where if Fox took a story real seriously, that gave permission to mainstream reporters not to take it seriously and vice versa. Right. I mean, this is that's one of the real problems. We talked about this in the special Fox uh, episode of The Remnant with Steve and, and Chris a while back. And um, uh, so I'm not saying it's not true um, ever. Right. I think I think Fox is. I, I go back and forth about how much Fox is overcovered um, or whether or not Fox is overcovered the border stuff. Um, because on the one hand, it's definitely a real story and it wasn't getting enough attention, although lots of outlets covered it. Um, but, uh, at the same time, you know, the sort of the way, you know, Fox will like, it, it's clearly trying to whip up, you know, uh, fervor about some of these issues, you know, um, special report now has a regular America's crime crisis and crime's a real issue all that kind of stuff. But like, um, more broadly at Fox, you know, there's a, uh, I would say a pretty clear desire to boost ratings and engagement, particularly post Tucker based on making people, but, but, but by shedding heat, not light. all that said, um, you know, I watch a good deal of MSNBC. Uh, it's, it's in lieu of cutting myself. And, um, I still think it's a, a mess profoundly intellectually dishonest on some like really core basic levels of American journalism and the way, um, you know, with, except for the occasional imported news story from NBC news, MSNBC is just simply an opinion network and they it's sort of like the John Stewart thing where he wanted it both ways. He wanted to be the comedian whenever criticized. He wanted to be, Hey, look, I'm just a funny guy who comes on a show after there are, you know, a, a show with puppets or whatever. Um, but then he wanted to be able to punch political players in the nose and all seriousness and be taken seriously. It's not what we used to call clown nose on clown nose off approach. I think MSNBC does something very similar where they are deeply editorial and opinionated in their coverage of things. And yet when criticized or when they need some extra dose of authority for their opinions, they say, look, we're just, we're just journalists here. And, um, you know, the Nicole Wallace show is, I mean, it's, it's, it's so ripe for Saturday Night Live parody where every night it opens with the breaking news, Chiron, you know, like breaking news. And then the breaking news is basically like an op-ed from the New York Times about Trump from six days ago. Um, and, uh, but I don't think CNN does that. And I don't, you know, I, I didn't watch a lot of CNN during the Trump years. Um, uh, but I've been watching more and listening more in the car because A, I'm there and B, because I think Fox is becoming sort of top heavy with just even during daytime with the sort of slanted opinion stuff. And, MSNBC, I listen to for sociological reasons, right? To understand where like the, the elite left, the pro, you know, the, the, the Biden apologist, you know, DC liberal conventional wisdom is. Um, and I, I think it's really sad what's happened to Morning Joe and that it's now just basically pure liberal conventional wisdom. Um, it used to ha offer something a little different. There used to be conservatives on there that would disagree. I mean, Noah Rothman's never on there anymore. Pod's never on there anymore. Um, yeah, Charlie Sykes is on there, but Charlie Sykes, who I like, you know, but he's brought on there to talk specifically about Trump stuff or Trump adjacent stuff. Um, he's never brought on there to talk about tax cuts or, or, or strong defense or, or any of those kinds of things. Um, and, uh, but CNN, you know, I've been paying a lot more attention to CNN and, you know, and so now it's kind of funny when I'm, when I'm tuning into Fox and I hear how nobody's covering the Hunter Biden this, or nobody's cover, covering the laptop that, or the, you know, the Biden crime family, whatever. It's like, well, no, actually, you know, I heard a whole, you know, segment um, just 10 minutes ago on CNN about that. I mean, CNN's covering a lot of these things 
that um, people claim, and particularly Fox people claim, CNN is not covering. And I think, and and I hear it from normals all over the place on Twitter and email, whatever, you know, when I, when I venture out and take the Kleenex boxes off my feet, um, people will say, oh, the mainstream media just doesn't cover anything. That's the only reason why I have, that's why I go to Fox and blah, 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 blah. And they say that because they're told that that's the case. Um, and they, because they're told that that's the case, they don't see for themselves. Now, obviously some people do, I'm speaking in broad generalizations, but, um, and, you know, and maybe it was the case, but, it, you know, I'll just say is like, you know, you watch, if you watch, you know, one of the news shows on CNN, if you watch Jake Tapper, I mean, first of all, Tapper pushes back on, on, on Democrats all the time. Um, and, uh, anyway, I just think it's, uh, I, I'm long on record that I think cable news in and of itself is bad. Um, but I think that a lot of people are speaking from uh, either old talking points or borrowed talking points about, you know, what CNN does and doesn't cover. Anyway, enough of all that. 